recording. Hey, hey everyone, Lee Ashby here for BSMA Motocross Memories. I've got another classic interview for you tonight. I have got former AMA star and pro circuit Kawasaki rider, David Pingree. How are you doing, David? Real good. Thanks for having me on. It's awesome to get you on, mate. Absolute pleasure to be able to get you on. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, you bet. Top man. Uh, so we'll crack on with the questions then. Uh, what was your favourite track as a schoolboy rider, and then your pro, uh, pro career as well, and why? Um, I think as an amateur, there, you know, um, my favourite was always Mammoth Mountain. I don't know how familiar you are with that over here, but yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah it's a one time a year event. Maybe that's what makes it so cool, uh, is you don't get to ride it often. Okay. Uh, but it also has incredible dirt. You're up in the mountains, you know, in this beautiful town, and there's mountain biking and fishing and hiking. And so the race was awesome, always awesome, but just being up there was great. That was always my favorite amateur event. Still is if I can get up there for – they have a whole vet week. And so I still try to make that as often as I can. Um, as far as my favorite pro track, um, You know, it's, I mean, probably one of my favorite tracks was Millville Oh yeah. Uh, in Minnesota. Uh, I, I always did crappy there. I, was, I did terrible. I, I don't know that I ever got into the top five overall, but uh, just great dirt. And again, great location, um, fun layout. So. Okay, true. Um, what, what riders did you look up to and idolize when you were young and why? Yeah, Wardy was my guy, Jeff Ward. Jeff Ward, Jeff Ward, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and back then, I, I mean, I was born in 75, so um, we didn't, <laughs> it wasn't really, I didn't know anything about Grand Prix motocross or, oh, right, okay. uh, you'd read it in the cycle news, yeah. you know, weeks and weeks after the event, that was the best you could do. So uh, I, w I rode Kawasaki's when I was a kid. I've always been short, so Wardy was like my guy. <laughs> um, and I liked that he was... <clears throat> He was a fierce competitor, and he always just let his his riding do the talking, you know. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, I actually used to not like Rick Johnson. <laughs> yeah. You know, they were kind of nemesis at the time. Yeah, that yeah. was when I really started watching the sport. It was when Wardy and RJ and Bailey and Johnny O, you know, those guys were all really fighting. Yeah. And um, yeah. RJ is a friend of mine now. I, he's amazing, and I really appreciate the way he, he was yeah. now. But at the time... He pissed me off because he would always just run his mouth. And, you know, Wardy was just like was professional awesome. and just got got the job done. You know? <laughs> so I appreciated that as a kid. Um, yeah. And then, gosh, really until um, it was really just Wardy was my guy until I got a, I moved from Montana where I was born to Arizona. And uh, I got to be friends with Jimmy Button because he was he lived in that same area. And so I was I was a starting to get better on mini bikes and going to amateur nationals and doing better. I was riding with Jimmy quite a bit and hanging out with him. So he was a big influence on me as well. Just, just, uh, riding technique and, and race strategy and all that kind of stuff. He helped me a lot. So did you, did you actually, did you actually get to ride or race with any of your guys that you looked up to? Well, um, yeah, I mean, so when I, not obviously during my motocross career, well, I did Jimmy, yeah. but, um, the, neat, the coolest thing was when I got into supermoto racing, yeah. after I was done with my career, Wardy was the 450 guy at TLD Honda, and I they hired me to be the 250 guy. So I got to travel around and race with, and then I eventually moved up to the 450 class and raced with him, and we competed at X Games and things like that. So, um, and again, now Wardy's become a good friend of mine, and uh, some of my best memories are he and I, in our, the very first race transporter that TLD had was a piece of junk. It was an old NASCAR truck. Didn't have any AC. It was set up terribly. It was awful. It was cracking in half, literally. <laughs> yeah. But we'd sit in the front lounge area, which was where we would just get dressed because it was just the setup was all screwed up. And there's no AC, so we'd be at these hot races, you know, both of us not in the physical shape we used to be in our primes. A little chubby, kind of sweating up there, trying to pull on these leather pants, you know, and we would just start <laughs> laughing, like, dude, what are we doing? Uh, but to have those memories of, like, just admiring him so much, then getting to know him, and he is really a genuinely good guy, 
Yeah. You know, they say a lot of times you don't want to meet your heroes because they let you down. Yeah, I know what you're saying, yeah. It wasn't the case at all with him. And, you know, I just have some really fun memories of going racing with Jeff. So That's amazing uh, memories, then. Yeah, for sure. So, so lucky. That's pretty cool. That's, that's really cool. Um, who were your closest rivals in your pro racing days? And who did you enjoy racing with the most and why? Oh, um, in my pro days, let's see. Well, you know, each year it was different. Um, as, as I, as I kind of went into the pro ranks, there was Damon Huffman and Craig Decker and Mike Metzger and Casey Johnson. Those would be kind of the guys right as I was transitioning in. And then Craig got hurt. Metz kind of went to freestyle. Huffman was winning everything. Um, and you know, Casey was my teammate at Pro Circuit there in 95, 96. So um, I, I would say, you know, those guys initially, but then it was like every year it would change. You know, in 90, 95, uh, Rhino and Huffman. Rhino was my teammate, Huffman, but they were both kind of beating me. I wouldn't even call them rivals. Yeah. I, was the, I was kind of a rookie and um, trying to just learn from them. And then the following year, Kevin Windham came into the class, and he and I were competing for that championship till I got hurt. Um, 98 was Villeman. Um, 99 was Nathan Ramsey. I mean, it's like every year it was somebody different. 97 was Ricky Carmichael. So kind of every year that, that I raced, it was somebody different. Um, there wasn't any one person that kind of stayed with me my whole career. Yeah, I did have rivalries with Greg Schnell and Brian Deegan that okay. stemmed from Deegan and I got into it at, at an amateur national when we were kids and never liked each other. Okay. And Schnell and I, same thing. Like I was more, I was kind of the anti, I guess I would have been the establishment guy, right? Like I, okay. I had the factory ride. I was clean cut, wore the button up shirt and they had tattoos they were like, you know, screw the establishment. <laughs> we're we're not corporate sellouts. Yeah. So we kind of just were two separate groups, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, maybe that caused some of the friction. And it's all stupid. We've all squashed it all now. But um, I would say that was kind of the the biggest rivals I had coming up. Okay, that's cool. Um, what were your favorite? What was your favorite race team and bike you rode during your career? Primal Impulse Suzuki. Um, and it would have been 99 and 2000 that I rode for them. Yeah. And there's a few reasons why I, I really like that. One, I had great mechanics, a guy named Todd Brown and a guy named um, Sean Ulikowski. Uh Ulikowski went on to work for Preston when he won his championship, and Todd Brown's still in the industry doing suspension. And we were in a box van. Uh, I, I am such a fan of, of those days. Yeah. You know, there was something, while the presentation looks a lot better in a semi-truck, you know, the current haulers that everybody uses. Yeah, yeah. There was something so um, – it's just so fun about being in a van. It was you and your mechanic. And though, we, you know, I had several teammates, we were kind of like a team within the team. Yeah. So we would go during the week and find our own places to practice. And we got the same parts from the race team, but then we'd kind of tweak on them, and we were trying to always make our bike better. So you kind of had a team within a team, and it just – the box that allowed you to, between races, you know, go – ride at different tracks and stay at this guy's house and ride his track. And you just had a lot more freedom where now it's like the truck picks up and it's headed to the next place and you got to fly home, you know, yeah, um, reg very regimented. Is it? Yeah. It just doesn't allow for that latitude that we had back then. And mm -hmm. um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, so those, those, those two years were really good. That bike was the best bike I ever, 125 I ever raced. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. At the time, Bill's pipes, those guys were just, they were doing awesome things with factory Honda and they brought that over to the Suzuki and the thing was a missile. I couldn't, I couldn't make that bike do anything wrong. That 2000 RM 125 was incredible. And then when they changed in 2001, they went to the new model. It was kind of designed for Pastrana. It was taller and longer. And man, I couldn't, I couldn't ride that thing to save my life. <laughs> so anyway, I, I still, I always kind of keep an eye on Craig's list for an old RM125 from that year, from 2000. Yeah, yeah. One one day I may pick one up. Yeah, that'd be cool. Wouldn't it? Okay, next one. What was your favorite race number? Uh, was there any reason for having or wanting it? 
and how did it come about even as a youngster? Well, throughout my whole pro career, um, you, and even still, you know, you get a national number based on the amount of points you've earned, but yeah. that's changed yeah. uh, a ton. Used to be 125 Supercross didn't count for points. It was 250 Supercross or 125 or 250 Outdoor Nationals yeah. or 500s when, back when they had those. So yeah. as a result, my, my national numbers were never that low. I had 29 a couple of times, 35, um, 41. But if they were using the current system and you were adding Supercross points, because there was years I was top three in Supercross. I rode some 250 East rounds and I raced the whole national series. I would have been a top easily inside the top 20, top 15 mm -hmm. number. Yeah. But it wasn't like that back then. So uh, I would say during my pro career, I really like 29. I had it twice, once in 96 and then again in 98. Um but I, I actually really like the, the 101 that I've been using since then. Uh, and, and the reason I picked that, you know, I get a lot of people that ask me that. And um, I try to, out of respect for those guys that earn those top 99 numbers, because they bust their ass and it's, it's not easy to earn a national number. And I didn't want to have a number that somebody else earned. And yeah. so I kind of left those alone. And I thought, well, Josh Hansen's kind of got a lock on 100 over here. Yeah. Uh, so what's the next number? 101. All right. Take it. You're okay with that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It does look cool as well. Um, right. Uh, for what track stroke venue did you not enjoy racing at and why? Sacramento. Uh, Hangtown National, which is now the opener. Yeah. Just to, it, it's gotten much better, so I don't want to offend those guys. Yeah. Back when I was racing, and go back and look at any photos from the 90s. Yeah, yeah. It was a piece of crap. It would be. Muddy in the morning, and then turn by by the first by the time the first motos were up, it was hard as a rock. There was blue groove down, and then what they the way they handled the track prep back then, they would flood it for our race, mm -hmm. so that it was good for the 250 race. Yeah. So you got this rock hard shiny slick base, which I know you guys probably have some tracks yeah, like that. Yeah, there. yeah, Fox Hill, yeah. Now just flood the piss out of it, and <laughs> and go. I mean, it's a nightmare. I, I, yeah, it was yeah. the worst place. Wet on hard is not good. Now they're they're bringing different kind of soils in and ripping it, and it's better. It's definitely yeah. better. It was a mess back then. <laughs> Doesn't sound good. Right, I put, what was your favorite racing gear you've worn during your career, and why? <laughs> That's an interesting question. I mean, uh, I, I love the TLD stuff yeah. that I'm in now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I've been friends with Troy. He's painted my helmet since 95. I've got every helmet he ever painted for me. God, and I've been in their gear since 2003. Um, so I've, I've just got a good relationship with that company. But I will say the one thing that stands out, my first year of pro racing, I wore JT. Yeah. And uh, as a kid, looking up to you know all of those guys from that era, JT was it. I mean, that was, that was the coolest stuff you could get, man. So I, I rode for them in... In 92, 93, and 94. And um, it was starting to kind of be not as cool, <laughs> for sure. It was it was like these ugly, weird purple colors. And yeah. the designers maybe had been hit on the head a couple few times. But in that year, in 94, they made me some retro stuff. Okay. It was like just the old JT Racing USA logo yeah. uh, with like kind of these awesome. old school patches. And um yeah, anyway. Uh, didn't didn't run the machine. Him. Didn't run the machine. The dogger run the machine wear that as well, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Um, I mean, he wore it when it was cool, and then he, he stayed yeah. in it all the way up until they kind of went out of business or went paintball or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. I love the JT as well. Um, did you have any superstitions or anything, you ha or anything you had to do on race days or things you had to have a certain way on the day or anything like that? <clears throat> Yeah, I, I mean, the only thing that I had that was kind of ritualistic was I always put my left sock and knee brace on first. <laughs> but it was because my knees were so screwed up. I, I hurt them really young. I mean, 93, I tore my first ACL. I did another one in 95 and another one in 98. And so and my right knee is still, it's really junk. So I would have my knee braces so tight um, that it, it started to hurt after a while. So I would always put it on my left first because I didn't have to do that when it's tight. And the right one, man, I just cinched that thing down. <laughs> so that was really the only thing I did. I mean, 
I think racers are all a little bit superstitious just because, man, you're looking <laughs> for any little thing that will help you. But, uh, I wasn't too crazy. I didn't have underwear that I had to wear or any, you know, stupid stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, not too bad. Not too bad, not too bad. Does, uh, it seems to consume quite a few from some of the stuff they go on about. It's like crazy, some of the stuff. Well, I'm telling you, we're a mental case. Racers are just... <laughs> I know. And I, and I really think that the guys who, who really excel, like Stefan or McGrath or Ricky, mm. they're able to somehow just quiet that all of that mm. chatter in your brain down and just, you know, focus in. Yeah. And that's so hard to do. I mean... A lot of riders will have days where they get into that and they don't mm-hmm. let any of the distractions get to them. Mm-hmm. And they'll be like, man, I was, it just came easy to me today. I don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. But to duplicate that and do that every week, week after week, it's really hard. Yeah, yeah. And guys are very good at it. Um, where did you race as a amateur racer and the details of it back then? So, like I said, I grew up in Montana. Um which is not a great state to live if you're trying to race motorcycles. It's it's cold, man. It'd be like living up in the northern tip of Norway or something for you guys over there, you know, in that part of the country. I mean, just, yeah, it's, you could ride maybe five or six months out of the year. So, you know, we, we rode our faces off all summer and then uh, parked the bikes, you know, for the wintertime. But when I was 10, I moved down to Arizona, which is a much better area. We can ride all year round. And, um, you know, for those first 12 years, I would say I was just doing local racing. Mm-hmm. I wasn't doing a lot of amateur nationals. We did one, went to the World Mini Grand Prix in Las Vegas one year, okay. uh, right before I moved to Arizona. <clears throat> and I freaked out, man. I'd never seen so many people. I mean, you got <laughs> Montana's like a, <laughs> there is no big towns, you know, everybody lives in yeah. just little agricultural communities. It's yeah. wide open. It's beautiful. Yeah. But it. Uh, to go from that to a big stage of motocross and motocross back then in the mid eighties, <clears throat> it was huge over here. There'd be thousands and thousands of people showing up to race. Yeah. You'd have qualifiers, you know, like six or seven groups of qualifiers just to qualify into the main event. Um, so I, yeah, I sucked right early on the first several years I went, I was terrible. I would get so nervous and freaked out by all the people yeah. that I wouldn't I wouldn't ride nearly as good as I was capable of riding. <clears throat> After I was in Arizona for a little bit and again started riding with Jimmy Button and sort of working with him a little bit. Jimmy Gaddis lived there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um and those guys were so fast, you know. So just even being able to watch them. Yeah. And yeah. see what was possible, you know. Oh, wow, you can really come into this corner that fast or yeah. you can really jump that on an 80, you know. Like I I just wasn't sure when you can see somebody do something, at least for me, it's much easier to duplicate it rather than to just go, well, I, maybe I can do this or, you know, not know what the limits are. So that helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but we did do um, probably when I was 12, 13, then we started going. We started going over to California. That was when the Golden State Series was still it was still pretty big, not in its heyday of the of the 80s, late 80s. But mm-hmm. we were doing the local Southern California racing. You know, which was a five-hour drive. wasn't too bad. And you go over there, and it's full gates again of, of really fast guys. Yeah. And so I can't count all the trips we did back and forth to California, man. Just, <laughs> you know, my dad loved it, obviously, like any any other kid. You know, the dad's as involved as you are. Yeah, He's as invested in it and, and yeah. passionate about it as the kid. Yeah. yeah. So we would drive over and just, you know, hit every race we could. And, um. We did do Mammoth a few times. We did we did go to Loretta Lynn's a couple times. Um, but, but we really, there was so much competition in Southern California. I didn't have to go too far, too much further than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, anyway, that was a lot of Southern California stuff. A lot of Glen Helen, Paris Raceway, you know, all those yeah, famous yeah. places that are still there. Yeah, that's um, pretty good. Um, do you still ride at all now? And if you do, where and what bikes do you currently have and ride? I do. Uh, <laughs> I wish I got to ride a little more. I'd say I ride probably three times a month, I guess, if I had to put a number on it. But most of those, because I work for Vital MX, and I do all of their uh, project bikes, and build those up and test them. Yeah. And I do all their new bike introductions and the shootouts and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. uh, I would say most of the time it's it's working on one of those, which is 
it's great because it kind of gives me a reason to go like oh i gotta go riding today you know but it's always on a different bike and so while i do have a couple of bikes that are projects i built that are are, are mine okay um I don't get to ride them that much. I mean, I got a brand new YZ125 I've ridden one time, and it's <laughs> just built to the nines. It's actually Jesus. the same motor Ryan Villapoto raced with last year when he did those 125 All Star oh, races. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on. the yeah. actual cylinder and head and pipe that he used. Oh, so um, he awesome. came right off his bike and went right onto mine. That's pretty trick, then. Yeah, super trick. But I, like <laughs> I said, I the last you know ever since I've gotten it finished. Yeah. Every week, it's like, I've got a new project bike. Oh, I got to go test that bike or ride this one or that one. So I know that sounds like I'm a really stupid thing to complain about, but it's nice to ride your own bike and yeah, get, yeah. get something time, you're comfortable get on. And it's, yeah. it's set up for you, you know? So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't race too much anymore. Uh-huh. Just I got two little girls and, and three jobs, and, you know, it just doesn't really lend itself to being able to spend a whole day out at the track. But I can sneak away for three or four hours and go ride, you know, and then get home. So um, I might race once or twice a year, just something fun. But, uh, I still try to ride pretty regularly. That's cool. Um, when did you finish competitive racing and why? Uh, 2003 was my last year. Um, so I kind of did the 10-year thing. You know, the first race I did was 93 pro race, and then I – finished in the end of 2003 and I just I was just done I mean uh at that point I was late 20s which is crazy that in the late 20s at your late 20s you're like I'm done I'm, I <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I like I said I had blown my knees out pretty bad and um I don't know if you remember I, I you know I, my career was full of injuries that was really my biggest downfall it was just a lot of injuries and I had made a really good run in 2002 with the Red Bull KTM team, um, just got healthy, like had a, you know, a good run of being healthy through all of 2000, 2001, I stayed healthy. So then going into 2002, I was actually riding great. We got that KTM, even though it didn't have a link, we had it working pretty well. It was fast and I did okay at the first couple rounds. I won the third round, which was uh, Anaheim two. I was right there in the points. James Stewart was just in front of me. And I was second in points. And that was when we went to Phoenix, where you, I've probably seen where my bike breaks in half. Yeah. That was that weekend. I was leading my heat race, riding great. Everything was awesome. And then disaster. And like just after that happened, it was really hard for me to get my head back in the game. You know, I had, I had had so many injuries to that point. And you, you just have to figure out a way to kind of block them out or let enough time go by that you forget about it. Mm-hmm. And that was just like a really blunt reminder that even I could be doing everything right. And this sport is so volatile. It could still, I mean, I, I should have been really jacked up from that crash. And thankfully I wasn't, I did a slight shoulder separation and I was coughing up some blood, which was nothing, but it just sort of was like the last kind of nail in the coffin for me psychologically, where I'm like, man, I'm not, I'm not willing to take these chances anymore. And so, um, I rode some nationals that summer. The following year, I, I had an opportunity f- to ride for the Moto World Suzuki team. And I thought, okay, I'll be back to the Bill's Pipe Suzuki. I love that bike. I'll give it one last go here and see. And it was just like, like I, like I mentioned, in 2001, when they changed that bike, it just wasn't the same. And uh, I couldn't, couldn't agree with it. Yeah. Didn't have real good results. Ended up breaking my wrist in Supercross. Struggled through the nationals. And I mean, I knew. I knew I was done halfway through that season. I'm like, yeah, this isn't going to, this isn't going to work out. I'm done. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, what other sports do you enjoy watching or doing? Um, you know, I'll tell you, I don't enjoy watching a lot of sports. Yeah. Um, I can't sit still that long, you know? <laughs> uh, and I just, the only thing that I'll watch is my girls playing soccer. They both play okay. soccer competitively or football. Uh, competitively. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've gotten in. I mean, I love it. I love watching them play. But like sitting there watching on TV, I'd rather go outside and play. You know, I love I love playing any sport, uh, but I can't stand sitting there and watching it on the TV. Uh, but I, I would say the stuff that I really enjoy doing is surfing, okay. mountain biking, jet skiing, water skiing, snow skiing. Um, 
play a little bit of tennis, a little pickleball uh, for fun. Um, but man, like we used to have flag football games, like a bunch of the guys around here. Uh, so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll play anything. I love, I love sports. So I'm kind of down for whatever, but those would be kind of the, the bigger ones that I enjoy. Brilliant. I'll just call that the end of part one for a minute, David. Okay. Uh, I'll just pause that and then we'll come back to part two.